Hi, this is Misha. And obviously we do a lot of AK videos and we kind of approach it from all different cross sections. We have some videos looking at the development in Russia of the whole series from the original milled AK, the AKM, the AK-74, RPK, and so on. We have other series looking at the variants by nation, for example, Poland, Hungary, Yugoslavia, China. And uh, a few weeks ago we did a video with all the milled variations lined out on the couch because I had them all, I thought it'd make a neat video. It wasn't so much about the history, but about how they were similar and different. And in the same vein, I thought we would do a video looking at the AKMs. The AKM was the stamped receiver version first introduced in 1959 and then started to be adopted by various nations throughout the 60s. Like the original mill that fired 76239, the magazines, while they were updated, were interchangeable. Most of the parts were interchangeable, although they were made differently. The AKM would have a lot of stamped parts in addition to the receiver. It would also have a lot of lightened parts. For example, an AKM barrel is a lighter profile than an AK-47, AK Type 3 barrel. The furniture was also changed and lightened a bit, and as was the whole way it attached on the buttstock. But again, for more of that, you can check out the Evolution video. For this, I brought out really the closest to AKM copies, variants from other nations. Now, there are plenty of guns that are generally considered to be AKM that are really far enough away in variants that I didn't bring them out. Plus, hey, the table's only so big, right? So here we have an early production, Polish, and this was just called the KBK AKM. This one was made, at least the kit was, in 1968, for what it's worth, at the Radom factory, who made all of them in Poland. Here we have a Russian. This kit was made at the Ishesk factory in 1973, so relatively late production, and it has some late features we'll talk about in this video and others. These were also in Russia, made at Tula, of course. Over here, we have an Egyptian Mahdi. This is a original import from the 90s. This is an ARM from Intric, for what it's worth. But the Mahdi factory would produce, and they were called Factory 54, for that matter, a very, very close derivative of the AKM throughout the 60s and 70s and really through the 90s. And it has the side folding stock that Mahdi developed. They're, most of these would have the wood stocks, of course. In Egypt, these were known as the Misser, M-I-S-R, in Egyptian service, and also the ARM for police and export. Next, we have another kit build. This is a 71 East German kit. And as you can see, it looks a little different than a standard AKM. They called it the MPI KM, but it's actually very, very similar except for different furniture. Next, we have a Romanian. This was produced at the Kuger, or Kuger factory, who made all their AKMs. Well, there's kind of a long story there, but basically, yes. They've changed names and there's been subcontractors. This is called the PM-63, or if you like, PM Model 1963. This is, again, a very close copy of the AKM, with the only difference is being in furniture. This is my SAR-1, quite famous for being my first AK ever that I've had for a long time. So it was made in uh, 2001, I believe is what it's marked. But uh, So it's a later production with some later features from Kuger. The earlier guns were closer to Soviet. We'll get to that. And finally, the only true pre-ban on the table. I hate the slings on these, they're so long. 
This is my Hungarian SA85M. This is the pre-band imported by Kastner. This is one of the variants made in Hungary by FEG Factory 2. And they would have several different ones. This is based on the AK63F with the traditional AKMS underfolding stock. In some ways it's a very close copy of the AKM, and other ways it's very much not. So, let's get to brass tacks. This is why I didn't put mags in these. They were already close enough with just slings. So, the Polish guns were very close to the Russian. Early ones like this, though, would have a few carryover features from the AK Type 3 production, the milled production. Namely, they would have blued finishes on the metal. They would have the bolt group left in the white, like an AK milled would have. And they would have furniture made out of hardwood. Now, I can't confirm this 100%, but it seems like buttstocks and lower handguards were hardwood. It seems like the uppers were always a laminate or composite wood. I know that the Russian hardwood uppers are very prone to cracking, so that might have been the change. Also, the early Polish AKMs would have a concave-style checkered pistol grip. And pretty much otherwise, we have the AKM features. We have the skinny light profile barrel we are threaded 14 millimeter early on these would just come with muzzle nuts akm bayonet lug standard akm gas block akm gas tube with the ports on the uh, on the block palms well lower handguard which so even though it is hardwood it's different in that sense from the mill guns we have the lightning cut bolt carrier, even though it's still polished, which is something they introduced with the AKM. We have the rib top cover, stamp top cover style, which is again an AKM feature. Stamp receiver, of course. Boop. We have the rear sling swivel at the bottom of the stock, AKM feature. We have the AKM style 1000 meter as opposed to 800 meter rear sight. And we have the sling swivel located on the uh, handguard retainer rather than the gas block. So pretty well AKM with just a few holdovers from the, uh, from the AK. In 1969, they would start to update this and go to more of an AKM finish. They would go from the blued finish on the receiver, barrel, top cover, so on, to a paint finish. Now, interestingly, in 69, the bolt carriers would still be in the white, but by 1970, they would start painting the bolt carriers as well. They would also go from the hardwood furniture to laminate wood, which is what Russia was using really since the late AK milled production. And they would go to a different style of pistol grip with convex checkering, you know, the one you're probably more familiar with, and the color would lighten up. It would go from this dark, almost black, with some red tinting, to um, to red and then even almost an orangish red later on. Poland would even go to some of the late features we'll look at in this Russian gun in a second, including the cast uh, gas block, and they would go to the cast front sight base, and of course they would go to the AKM muzzle brake recoil check. So as time would go on, the Polish guns would actually follow the Russian changes quite closely. The Pol uh, Radom would stop manufacturing the fixed stock AKM. There's debates. Uh, the Radom website has kind of claimed they would stop making these set in 1977, 1978. Other places say they still made them through the 80s, but not for the Polish military. They would keep making the understock, underfolding stock version, the AKMS. Really, for the military, I think there was a final contract in 1995. And I know they were still selling off at least old stock guns through 98. So they would keep making the AKMS for quite a long time in Poland. As the military would become more mechanized, it made sense. 
So here's the Russian gun. Obviously, Russia began production. They adopted it in 59. Really, production did not get going until 1960. It takes time to, uh, to set up. The reason I picked this one is because it has quite a few of the later features. We've gone from a machined front sight, gas block, retainer, to these all starting to be cast in the 70s. We would also go to a cast bolt carrier. We would go to more of a lip on the dust cover. We would also add a ledge to the takedown button here. Sorry guys, that one's a little stiff on this gun. Had to work on it. And kind of most noticeably would switch the sling swivel from the bottom to the side of the buttstock. There are plenty of other differences, but the main takeaway is they would start to introduce more cast parts, but never a cast trunnion. And again, Poland would kind of follow suit. AKM production and AKMS production in Russia, they tended to favor the AKM more. They would, they would make plenty of the underfolders, but they made uh, probably a larger number of the fixed stock guns, whereas in Poland it's kind of the reverse. They would kind of slow it down around 1975 because the AK-74 was starting to come online. And then they would completely stop around 1977. Now that said, the AKM would of course remain in Russian service for quite a long time. I can't really show you the differences because this is the quintessential AKM. I mean, this is Russian, so it is the standard. <laughs> Bakelite pistol grip, or, uh, laminate wood furniture, a paint over park finish was standard. Obviously this is a kit build, so it's a little different. It does have a painted finish, but yeah. But this was the standard. So moving on to the variants. The East German is actually, despite the furniture, very, very similar to the Russian. Yeah, they would begin producing the MPI KM in 1966. And it really is a pretty close copy of the Russian. Like the Polish, the first ones would have a blued finish. They would transition over to a paint finish in the 70s. The very, very first ones would have a hardwood furniture, like this lower here. It's kind of a beech wood. It's pretty light, it's kind of porous wood. It's good wood, but not very attractive. The very first would have fully wood furniture sets, except for maybe the pistol grip. They would go over to fully plastic sets, like this, including a lower handguard made out of the same plastic material, but because of the heat from the barrel, it would melt, and so they would replace it with the traditional wood grip. So that's how we get kind of this interesting plastic plus one piece of wood on here. It's not a mismatch, that's just how it worked. This buttstock is different. There's no storage compartment because this is very hollow. It's very lightweight. It actually saves quite a bit of weight on the gun. We have a sling swivel on the bottom, but it's a little more narrow. It's only about an inch wide as opposed to about an inch and a quarter on the standard AKM. So it's a smaller swivel because we have a different style of more two-point kind of M16 looking sling. Correspondingly, since we don't have the metal clip, the front swivel is opened up more. On the regular AK, it's only half inch, a little bit more. On this, it's a full inch. So it's enlarged for the sling to go through. That's probably the biggest difference on the metal parts. And really, those are the things that separate the MPI-KM from the standard AKM. Otherwise, we're pretty well the same. Same kind of lightning cut bolt group, rib top cover, lightweight profile barrel, machined gas block. This has the early small lightning cut in the front, no lightning cut in the back sight base. 
The first of these would have muzzle nuts, like the Polish. They would start to transition over to the AKM style brake around 71. So this is an early example that would have it. In 72, they would introduce the MPI M72. It's very similar to this gun, except it would have a side folding stock. When we talk about the the East German, oh, excuse me, the Egyptian, we'll talk about more. But the 72 would have the, the wire side folding stock. They would also go to replacing the wood lower with kind of an AG4 fiberglass, Bakelite, as most people call it, lower handguard. They would keep the same polymer upper, or plastic upper, and the same plastic, pretty unique looking pistol grip. Checkering. As time would go on, they would go to different finishes. They would go from a polished blue to a matte blue. They would go to a painted finish. And in 1982, they would um, introduce the MPI M74, usually the MPI S74 in 5.45. And actually, the AKM production in 76239 would never stop in East Germany completely in the 80s, but it would re really significantly slow down. So they would keep making these through the 80s, but the uh, this 545 would be standard. And then, of course, after the end of um, the Cold War, these would be phased out of service after reunification. So it's actually quite close with a few minor differences relating to the furniture and the sling. Now, the, the uh, Egyptian is interesting. A lot of people say this is as close to a Russian as you're going to get in a semi-auto form in the U.S. as far as an import, and that's pretty, pretty correct. In the 19, really the late 50s, running into the 60s, Egypt was allied with the, uh, with the Warsaw Pact, the communist bloc. Originally, the communist bloc tried to ally with Israel, didn't work out, so allegiance had sh uh, shifted. Long story short, the Russians set up AKM production at the Mahdi factory in the 60s. As far as I know, Egypt never made a milled gun. They went straight into the AKM. In the beginning, they would be building these on Russian equipment, using some Russian steel, and having Russian supervisors. And most ru ru of the Egyptian workers were trained by the Russians. So the, the first guns were very much copies with really the only difference being a different type of wood used. It's commonly said that this wood came from Finland. I might have done, I don't know. I haven't ever substantiated it, but I've never really looked. So the wood's a little different, even though it is still Russian style laminate wood. The butt stock would be the same as uh, on a Russian. The finish is a paint over park, Russian style. With really the only difference, the, the Egyptian fit and finish was a little bit more haphazard than the, uh, than the Russian fit and finish. They just didn't put quite as much care into it as they did in Russia. Now, in 1972, 73, there was a falling out between Egypt and Russia, and Egypt would again kind of move towards the west. But they would have uh, some relations with East Germany to get AK parts and know-how, and this is actually how this stock came to be. The Egyptians would first use the East German-developed wire side folder, and why this was made, it will fit a standard AKM rear trunnion as opposed to needing a special rear trunnion like the AKMS. So it let them use the same receiver, basically, for folder or fixed stock. Well, the Egyptians originally used the German style. Then they went to their style, which the mechanism inside is pretty much the same. They basically just simplified the strut with a straight piece of steel, and then a stamped and riveted on butt plate. And this is the Egyptian. It's very unique to that, to that nation. Most of the uh, the MS or sorry, the 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 missers, the MI, SRs, the ARMs, were the fixed stock, of course. 
and as relations between Russia and Egypt fell apart, of course the Russian advisors and all of that would leave, but the Mahdi factory would, would retain the know-how and the uh, tooling from Russia to make the AKM. And they would continue to make these through the 80s and 90s, first for the Egyptian military and then for export other Middle Eastern customers. And then, of course, for the U.S. and the civilian market. I don't know exactly when production ended in Egypt. It was around 2001, 2002, 2003, in that time frame. AKM production seems to either be completely gone or at least deeply mothballed here at the end of 2017. But yeah, the Egyptian gun, as you can see, is really very much a copy of a late 60s, early 70s pattern Russian gun. Still have a machined gas block. We do have the lightning cut late style front sight base. We have the sugar scoop, of course. So we have some of the simplifications, some of the economies that Russia would introduce, but not all of them. And the furniture is kind of their own thing. This pistol grip has the concave checkering, and it's made of a more of a true Bakelite material. It's, it's, it's harder, glossier, and also more prone to cracking and breaking than a lot of the other Comblock grips, unfortunately. It'll come in uh, brown and black, and even some will have kind of a blue hue to the black. And as you see, the handguards are almost always mismatched in color. The upper tends to be a little bit different than the lower. The lower typically matches the wood stocks. This came to me with the wood stock, but I got this crutch folder, thought it was kind of neat, put it on. Why not? Makes it a little different from the rest. And we have histories on like on these, like I said. So for more on like the Mahdi and stuff. Check that out. Oh, let me fold my up, up again. I think I need a bigger table, guys. There we go. As I said, that was the first uh, true import as a semi. This is the, the one pre-ban. Now, Hungry would, um, they would make the milled gun, known as the AK-55. Then, they would switch over to their first version of the stamped gun, known as the AKM-63. Then they would do the compact AMD-65. And finally, in the late 70s, they would introduce this pattern here. This is simply called the AK-63. It's more of a, a traditional AKM pattern. They introduced for export and their own military use. Part of it was just to be more conventional. Another part was to cut costs a bit. But it's interesting because it has a mix of features from the original AK Type 3 and AKM. First, though, we have this AKMS underfolding stock. This is the typical pattern that most nations used. It locks on both sides, unlike the original. It's made of bent and welded stamped steel that's riveted together. Folding butt plate. So yeah, I just thought we needed at least one under folder on the table. On this gun, we have this typical AKM barrel. We have the relatively early non-lightning cut base, sight base here. We do have the sugar scoop muzzle device. Typical AKM bayonet lug. This uh, gas block's a little different. Unlike most of the machined ones, this one has a rounded top and bottom. Most of them have kind of a flat top and bottom. So it's kind of a different pattern. Also, we have a ported gas tube kind of carried over from the original AK-55. So it's a little different than the standard AKM. Now we do have the sling swivel on the handguard retainer, but the handguards themselves are a little different, as is this retainer. It's a little bit different shape. That's kind of a carryover from the AKM-63. These handguards 
or a slab side, non palm swell. Moving back, we have a typical stamped receiver. We have a typical rib dust cover. Now this bolt carrier does not have the lightning cut, as you see. Which is a bit different. And we have a wooden pistol grip. This is very much like a late style Russian milled pistol grip with the ferrule on the top kind of the shape. It's a little unique to Hungary. They, they use this grip style on uh, pretty much all their previous guns going back to the AKM-63, AMD-65. This is kind of unique to this. The rear latch is the smooth top style. So while this is mostly an AKMS, it does have a few features that are unique to it. This is the AK-63 F, excuse me, AK-63D for the underfolding. AK-63F would be the fixed stock, which is a little confusing, but in Hungarian it makes a lot more sense. So they did make a fixed stock version, both in the SA-85 M line and the military select fire line. It's just the underfolders are a bit more common. And Hungary would continue to produce these and sell these through the 80s and in limited numbers in the 90s. But FEG would uh, shut down its firearms division around 2004, 2005. That said, the AK, all in various forms, and the 7.62-39 cartridge is still used in, uh, in the Hungarian military to this day. But it's an interesting variant. Oh, and this does have the kind of paint over phosphate finish that's very Russian style and uh, for that matter like the Egyptian but much nicer smoother you know kind of a nice kind of it's a neat gun but it's not a true AKMS clone for its little bit of the differences and a few parts aren't 100% interchangeable and finally probably the one most folks are familiar with Romanian guns as I said, this was my very first, my SAR-1. Like Egypt, Romania would never produce a milled AK, although they would use them. They came from Russia. In 1962, they tooled up at the Kugurikogur arsenal to produce a copy, basically an exact copy, of the AKM. And they started to do that in 1963, hence the PM63 designation. Now, the first two years or so of production, the guns were very much like the Polish. They would have a blued finish, and they would use hardwood furniture with typical palm swell handguards. Then they would go to a couple of different finishes. They would do either a more of a matte as opposed to polished blue, kind of a salt blue or they would go to more of a phosphate like on this kind of seems like they would go back and forth I've seen and I've seen this on the same gun the two different finishes on various parts <laughs> like dust covers I've seen blued and phosphated receivers anyway they would go to a slightly cheaper and easier to use finish in the mid 60s they would first go to laminate AKM palm swell handguard furniture sets oh the original guns would have a wood pistol grip too. Then they would quickly go to this Bakelite grip. It looks similar to the early Polish or the Egyptian. It's much more durable than the Egyptian though and it came in several shades. Then they would go to the now quite famous recognizable Dong foregrip. Oh, and I don't have it off the top of my head, guys. This is a pretty informal video, I know. I believe they introduced the dong around 67, give or take. Late 60s, I know that. By 70s, it was very standard. And, of course, older guns, when they were refurbished, could have had it added because it's just a standard lower handguard. They would do an underfolding version as well, known as the PM65. And it's unique in that it's an AKM all the way till you get to the back in the stock. And then they use a traditional AK 
S AK-47 <laughs> milled style underfolding stock that only locks on one side and it has more of the swept down angle but it's in several of our videos so it's kind of interesting that they never adopted a true AKMS stock otherwise though the the PM-63 is a exact copy it had all the same features that we've come to expect you get it by now as time would go on they would introduce more economies just like Poland would and Russia for example they would go to cast parts some parts would be cast they would also go to the lip on the dust cover and this one even has the dimple which Russia never seems to have used on the AKM but would go to in the AK-74 they do have the lip on the retainer here as well and other little differences like that as time would go on there's quite a few minor little variations if you observe these over the years but like everyone they were just trying to find ways to keep production costs low and you know quantities coming out the door hi this would be pretty standard in Romania through the 80s. They would keep them at pretty high production rates. There would be a slight dip in production due to worker problems in the, in the early 80s, but they would pick back up. Then they would adopt the 545 cartridge in 1986. Took them a few years to get that gun up and running. But by around 1990, a lot of the PM63s in service were starting to be phased out for the 545 PA86. Now the PA-86 introduced a right side folding stock that looks similar to the East German but internally is quite different and the military version used a push button as opposed to a lever. This would be carried over to the 7.62-39 gun and known as the PM-90. So they would do a slightly updated version of this with a side folding buttstock essentially, that's the difference. And while 545 is the standard in Romania today, I would not at all be surprised to hear that there are still a number of 762-39 guns, essentially AKMs, in service or at least in military stockpiles. Although they have gotten rid of quite a few coming over to the USA. This has the scope rail as you see. Really this is a pretty new style rail. Russia would offer the rail on their guns, but they didn't make it a standard feature until much later. This was only added for guns that needed optics or night fighting devices. Still there, side rail, riveted to the receiver. Good, good system, really. But yeah, I just thought I'd bring out a few AKM guns, at least the ones that were closest to the Russian pattern. The reason I didn't bring out guns like the Chinese or the Yugoslavian they're really, while well, excellent guns, not true AKMs. They honestly have more AK milled features than they do AKM. And again, for histories on these and more of a family view, check out those videos. This is just kind of an AKM overview because we did one for the milled and I'm sure we'll do one for the 74. Why not? It's always fun to do these videos. Hope you enjoy them anyway. We like making them. Gives us an excuse to play with AKs. <laughs> If you liked the video, we'd appreciate it if you'd click like. Also, if you haven't subscribed. And if you have not really, you could check out our other AK videos. We have several playlists for them. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below, as always. We all we really welcome them. And please tune in again soon for new and hopefully interesting videos. This is Misha, and we'll catch you next time.